Hey, it's me, MLB. Here is BNHA Second Generation, Chapter 29, and this one is titled Homework. Back at the agency building, Hiyoko sat the students down in the debrief room to have a talk about the information that they had gleaned from Mr. Dofu, as well as what their preferred next move would be. Well, Soshi said, I personally would research all the quirks of the ex-employee suspects, especially that manager guy, and see if I could find out their addresses so that I can pay them a visit. Okay, Yoko said. Good, Karishma, would you do the same? Oh, me? Jinsi asked excitedly. Yes, I would, but I would also find out if friends and families of these people would say they're a good person or not. Sometimes people notice things that could help identify which one could have been involved. Do you have any examples? Yoko asked her, feeling like she was talking with a particular person in mind. Well, I just remember the story about that one criminal who got caught because his wife said that he kept sneaking out at night. She was mad because she thought he was cheating on her, but he was just really up being a burglar. Oh, I do remember that case, Soshi said with a chuckle. Never get your wife mad or she'll dob you in with the police. And back ago, Hyoko asked the quiet blonde. You're all forgetting one major thing, he said snidely, slinging his arm over the back of Jinsi's chair and resting back. I'd do a background check on each of them. See if they have any criminal records. Oh, true, Jinsi gasped. Yeah, I do the same as Chi. He grinned proudly, a small screw you look being shot towards Soshi, who rolled his eyes. Well, homework for tonight is to find out as much as possible about the ex-employee suspects of Mr. Dofu. I will give you my login details for the criminal registry so you can gather information. After tomorrow, I will change my details so you won't be able to get in again, as this is solely for the purpose of the mission. Yoko said sternly. All details of this are to remain secret as well. No divulging information to friends, family or other. Understood? Yes, sir, all three students chorused. Good, he said with a head nod. I'm giving you all an early mark today, so go and do your research. See you all tomorrow. Thank you, all three chorused again, as they stood up and made their way from the room. Yoko was about to start a conversation with Kana when Chisuki suddenly appeared back in the doorway, looking mildly nervous. Um, Condor? He asked, slightly gruffly with eyes averted. Can you train me? Train you? Hyoko asked with low-key surprise, looking at the spiky-haired blonde. Yeah, like combat. I want to improve. Hyoko smiled. Of course, Bakugo. We'll start training tomorrow night, after your intern day is over. Really? She asked with excitement, then tried to play it cool. <clears throat> I mean, cool. Thanks. And with that he disappeared from sight again, grabbing his bag and running to catch up with the other two. Well that's then done for the day, Hyako said to Kana, turning to look at him as he sat on the side of the desk. The sensing hero smirked, raising his hands to sign. Alone, he signed to Hyako. Glancing around, Kana stepped over to his boyfriend and their lips pressed together eagerly. I've been waiting for your lips on mine, Hyako said to his boyfriend, standing up while still kissing and walking him back towards the wall until Kana was sandwiched there. They made out for a little bit, tongues and mouths playing lightly until Hyoko pulled back for a breath. I could do this all day, he said to Kana. Do it, Kana signed cheekily. I would, but we need to get to Rarefine to ask questions. That's the final store that Mr. Dofu owns. We need to see which employee could be targeted, Hyoko said. You coming, right? Yes, I'm coming. I want to be with you, Kana signed emphatically. Okay, good, let's go to the roof then. The roof? Why are we going to the roof? Kana signed, following Hyoko out and down the hall. You'll see, Hyoko replied cheekily. Up they walked, out the roof door and onto the landing, and before Kana could say anything, Hyoko ran for the edge and threw himself off, quickly spreading his wings, then turning back and hovering just off the edge. Jump to me, Kana. We need to fly to Rarefind, or we won't make it in time before they close. Jump? Kana signed with a mortified look on his face. Yeah, Yoko said back with an internal laugh. Come on, we've done this before. That time when the tree was about to break and you were on the top, you jumped to me then. I was eight and I did not weigh the same. I was much lighter that time, Kana signed back. I've been working out for this, Yoko replied. Come on, jump. Kana walked to the edge and looked down. Don't look down, just trust me. Catch me, please. Kana signed nervously. I'd never let you fall, Hyoko replied, opening his arms out to his boyfriend. Ready, 
Kana signed, steadying himself before crouching a little and throwing himself from the side of the building. Hiyoko laughed as he caught Kana, flying backwards a little as he let the momentum guide him. Okay, trust me on this one. I'm going to fly up a little bit and then roll in the air so that you're on my back. You can hang on to where my wing bones are, Hiyoko said as he flew straight up and then started heading across town. You ready? As he flew, he dove a little bit, feeling Kana's weight lessen as he headed towards the ground while rolling under Kana. The sensing hero pushed off Yoko and then grabbed for the wing bones as the winged one rolled underneath, getting himself into a seated position just behind Hyoko's wings. Well done, Hyoko praised once the manoeuvre had been accomplished. Off to rare find we go. The pair made it to rare find within 20 minutes to spare and got the employee sheet and then left, walking together instead of flying. Meanwhile, all three students were busily researching their respective people, using Hyoko's hero login so they could look up the criminal history on the computer. Jinsi was laying on her bed when her phone rang, and upon seeing Kiru's name she picked it up excitedly. Hey, oh my god, today was so awesome, she sung into the phone. Oh, hey but wait, are Seismic Kana and Condor dating now? Yes, Ginny wailed sadly. Hero Kana has sailed. Damn, Kiru replied. Oh well, there's always girls if you get bored of the guys. Jinsi chuckled. Yeah, thanks, I'll keep that in mind. So how was your day? What's on for you this week? I've got this fancy hat thing tomorrow, that's about it. Oh, I'm so sorry I'm not going to be there, Ginny apologised. If I wasn't on internship, I'd be front and centre. And there ends chapter 29, stay tuned for chapter 30 coming tomorrow.